Out to Lake Oswego we go. Maybe that rhymes or something. I don't know. To, uh, to Lake Oswego in Oregon, where you can uh, you can kill yourself uh, legally and you can smoke pot legally. So what you do but is there you there are a lot of states where you can you smoke commit pot. you com- you take the suicide pill and smoke a joint while you're going. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> This is Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. Timegoesby.net is her blog. And uh, we talk to her every couple of weeks because she's my, my ex-wife, and it's part of the uh, divorce agreement that I have to talk to her every two weeks. <laughs> Here's a question for you. Yes? About that. Yeah? What was yesterday? Let's see here. I have to, Oh, well, that's our wedding anniversary. Yes. You know how I remember it? Normally, I, I can't. Uh, can I remember our our wedding anniversary for for Marjorie and I? I, I, I they asked me in a court case that we're in. Uh, so when were you and your wife married? And I couldn't remember the date. Oh no! And and the lawyer for the other side, it was a woman, looked at my wife and goes, "Just like a guy." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. great. I love it. <laughs> but I remember to se- September 18th because that was my mother's birthday. That's right. And I always remembered it that way. So yes. Right. We would have been married how many years if we were still married? 53. Maybe it's better we didn't stay married. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, here, here is what we've been going through, uh, and, and it, re- my audience can relate to it. The new Skype. You, you put the new Skype in your new computer, and uh, you just don't know how to... There's no, How to there's use it. no it, way to figure and, it out. And they, they, they don't said they went anything. to this new system because it's more self-intuitive. It is so complex and ridiculous that, you know, the other one was so simple. It was just, you know, cut and paste. Call the there's number. There's also a distinct lack of words. There are lots of little icons and things like that, but no words. This worries me for the future. <laughs> well, you see, now you've got a new address is what you've got. They gave it to me. I liked my old one. Yeah, yeah. They but no, but here's what happened. You do have your old one. It's out there. It's that you got a new machine, you installed Skype, it automatically gave you a name. What you could do is sign out of there and sign into your old name, but you don't know but you don't but you don't can't even find anything that says sign out or sign in. Oh yeah, I found it. It doesn't exist. I found it. It, up at the very top, you know, uh, there's a where where your name is, uh, there are a whole bunch of options and one of which is sign out. If you hit I those three little those dots, on my screen. they well, aren't there. But you well, not right now because you're talking to me. Oh, when, they weren't there when we were fooling no, around. No, no. When I told you to go to the top of the page and see that your green button. Yeah. Well, that's not a sign yeah, in well, or sign well, out no, button. No. No. Over to the side, there are three dots, and you click on that, and a, a menu comes down, and you can say sign out, and then you sign in with your old name, but you can't if remember. I it. You can't remember the old name. So. <laughs> You're gonna have to keep. Call, you're gonna have to call me from now on because. Uh, I guess so. I mean, I, I guess. Call, wait a minute. Oh, I just they showed me a picture of you as Ronnie Bennett. Oh, okay. Well, well, at least we got your picture. But I sent you a request to make me a contact, and and you I, didn't. nothing happened. Nothing I never happened. got it. Nothing happened. Yeah, it, it's it's screwed, folks. It's just screwed. Something terrible. But what the hell, you know? So what's how, going on in your life? Well, nothing much. Nothing much. Just, uh, you know, seeing doctors and working out. I, I don't know what they have to do with each other, but, you know. Sure they do. They have to do with your health. Yeah. Your picture, you're a little dim today on your picture. You might turn, a put, the light, put a little more light on you. Put a little more light on you. There we go. Okay, that's better. It, it's mood lighting. Not too much? No, it's not too much. Just fine. Uh, uh, but we'll figure out how to adjust your camera and everything. I mean, I'll give you a call during the week and we'll take care of this. But anyway. When you're not as frustrated, uh, yeah, I'm trying to come down. You yeah, know? I just, I, you have no idea the past week with a new computer, all the things that have gone wrong, and I've maybe fixed half of them. The others, one at a time, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, there there is things that these computer people, these companies do that just drives me crazy. Like I'm Windows sure. loves to decide to shut your machine down and install the newest version. Oh, you know what happened? For days, for days, since I first set this up, over a week ago, it's been telling me I need to update Windows. Well, you know, that's going to take all your life, so I haven't had time. 
And finally, this morning, I was up at 5.30. You know, the news is always the same. It's all Trump all the time. So I didn't have to pay attention to the news. And um, so the, and the little notice came up on my screen again. And I thought, okay, I'll do it this morning. I've got four hours or more till I need to talk to Alex. It went till 9.30. We were set for 10. It yeah. took till 9.30 to update Windows. Really? And they could at least do a countdown for you. Oh, you you've never you've never had to update uh, 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 the Mac system. The Mac no, system. Never had it, a Mac. It, it, you may as well go on vacation and come back. You know that's how long it takes. Yeah, I got to tell you this. Many many years ago, I've forgotten who it was, but it was some big time, and it was a name we knew then, and I never can make it come to mind. A big time head of a giant. Oh, Barry Diller. Barry That's Diller, right. Barry Diller. And he had quit his big-time Hollywood job, whatever it was at that time. And he announced that he was, this was 20, 30 years ago, that he was going to spend the next year investigating this new thing called the Internet. So he goes away. We don't hear of him publicly uh, for the next year. And then he did an interview or wrote an article. I don't remember what. But he went to, and because of who he is, he got to hang out with all the big-name Internet people, you know, Bill Gates and um, all the rest of those guys. Anyway, um, and at the end, he announced that this was a very interesting idea. He'd learned a lot. It had all kinds of places to go. He said, but in terms of most of us using one of these things, it's not going to be useful until it's as easy to use as a light switch. I have never forgotten that. He's right. Well, no, and he's absolutely right. And still haven't gotten that far. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you, uh, the uh, the iPhone, uh, uh, some of the smartphones, uh, the uh, uh, things like the iPad are far more intuitive than anything you do on your you computer. You can't write an article on them. You need a real keyboard and, you know, to well, actually write you know, instead I, of a little message, how are the you? The newest iPads, you can buy a keyboard for it, you know. Yeah, but you also, I've now got, you know, a great big diagonally 26-inch screen yeah i'm an old lady i like having the great big screen yeah right and my eyesight's going and i need the big screen with the big icons in there and it's it's much easier when i used the little laptop before i got the new computer after the old one broke yeah that i mean i was like this squinting trying, even when you make that i have never been able figure. i've never been able to get into laptops uh they just don't seem to have enough going for them where i can use them like i can use a powerful machine mm -hmm. you know so you know uh I, I mean i wouldn't want to do this interview uh on a uh, on a on a laptop because i've got the the, the thing that's recording the uh, the video and the, uh, the that program and then your picture and you know i that on a little screen i would be going blind trying yes, to do that that's why i like my great big yeah. screen it's really wonderful it's bigger than my tv screen <laughs> so what's new in the land of old people now, I had you on a couple of weeks ago on the radio. Uh, and, right. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Where yes. I, I admitted to my age on national radio. You haven't done that before. No. I mean, I, I just said I was going to commit an act that is surely a career killer uh, on this program tonight. And I said, at the end of it tonight, I'll tell you how old I am. And what yeah, happened? Yeah. After I said you? I'd have everybody guess at how old I am, and they just go on the on the on the computer, look up Wikipedia, and find out immediately right. how old I am. So I wasn't going to make it a guessing game. And, and my whole point was, you know, that very few people admit how old they are. I mean, in show business, you, you, you have to pretty well figure through history how old they must be now. But they don't come out and go, "Hey, it's my," you know, you know who did the other day uh, on an interview I saw. Jane Fonda. I mean, she said her age for many, many years. Yeah, she has never not said her age. She's been very good about that. Yes, she looks forty. And they say you look great. Well, of course, if I had that many facelifts, so would I. But you know, <laughs> she's had the work done, but she looks fabulous. You know. Well, see, I think that that's. A, I don't like that because it makes the whole world feel like looking old is a terrible thing, and. And it's not. It's not. I look in the mirror now. I know that I have aged dramatically since the sur surgery 14, yeah. 15 months ago. Uh, and I really see it in my face. And I'm still fascinated. I mean, I watch this particular line. 
two or three years ago it wasn't there. Then it was just barely there when I smiled. Yeah. And I, every once in a while when I was, you know, standing near a mirror, yeah. oh, gee, it got a little deeper. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with looking old. But I was saying that most people in show business do not admit their age. Uh, and especially in certain fields, they will lie about it. For instance, writers in television, you're washed up at 40. Yeah, but see, the problem is you're, you're washed up. The lying doesn't help because you don't get a job without meeting them in person. Yeah, but if you're, let's say, you're 45, let's say, and you say, no, I'm 38, you can get away with it, okay? But I mean, see, Every time famous people do that, they reinforce the idea that old is bad, and it gets worse and worse and worse. So more, did you know that age discrimination, on average, mm -hmm. in the workplace begins as young as 40, and for women it begins as young as 35? Yeah. Well, think about that. If you get out of school these days, if you do an advanced degree, you got 15 so let's say good years. three or 24, you've got 10 or 15 years before they tell you you don't know anything anymore, get out of here. But I see it as in that period of time, from my own personal experience and yeah. friends, yeah. that you're just hitting your stride. You're just getting good at what you do by that time, 35 mm -hmm. or 40. Yeah. And so the whole world is losing the expertise that people have. Um, accumulated in that period of time and would really be ready to roar at whatever they do. Exactly. But then you're told that you're too old. Yeah. Speaking of which, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. That one of my blog readers emailed to ask if it was worth discussing, and I think it is. Um, when do you think someone is too old to be president? You know, <clears throat> I was thinking about that the other day. And uh, I don't, I think in this day and age, the job of the president takes a lot more physically than it used to. Oh. Uh, I think it's just uh, there, there, there are more places to go, more, you know, in the old days. Uh, no, 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 got, no, 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 no. Uh, That's just Trump. You've gotten too used to Trump. Other people didn't get on an airplane every other day. Well, uh, uh, Obama was the perfect age for a president. I think, in a lot of ways, because he had the vim, the vigor, he had, uh, a part of it is your uh, your appearance publicly and how old people perceive you to be because, uh, uh, you know, he wasn't too young to, for them to say, oh, he's a kid trying to run the country, and he wasn't too old that people would go, look at that old codger. I mean, I look at a guy like Grassley on that committee with uh, with Bart Simpson or whoever's running for Supreme Court. Um, and I look at him and I go, y you shouldn't be there. You're too old for this. Because he's... he's, a, he's Just because you he's, don't agree because, with him politically? No, because he, he cannot think out of the box at his age. Neither can a whole lot of 20 now, year I old. can't either. If I could think out of the box... But young people can't. If I could, be, if I could think out of the box, I'd be a bigger success in the internet. Okay. Alex, cre Alex age has nothing to do with creativity. Nothing. Uh, I think it does. I disagree. And some, you can read all kinds of things that will tell you that. Well, I will say that that you, uh, at a certain age, you stop creating and you start working on old tapes. In other words, you're good at your craft. There's no question about that. But you're not going to come up with the new revolutionary ideas you did when you were younger. Not very many people ever do when they're young, and a lot of old people continue to do that. Well, I mean, just a few years ago, I came up with this citizens panel format, which is is new and different. But that's, I think, my last great idea. I, I think I'm finished being able to think that far out of the box that I can come up with something that's just weird and different. Okay. Weird is not necessarily good, nor is different good. There are all kinds of ways to create new things, new ideas new ways of doing things that aren't revolutionary in that sense. Yeah. That you're saying, big big deal. No, very few people have a big deal new idea, ever. Yeah. Uh, now, you're saying, how old to be president? Let's get back to that one. So I, you know, I, I said that I thought that, you know, 70 you're starting to push it as president. You know, uh, by then you should have been an ex-president, <laughs> you know, and, and be able to console Alex, the newest president. you are president. so ageist. I'm not ages. It really surprised me. Hell, I'm older than you are. Screw you. <laughs> how, how can I be ageist? 
<laughs> you know, you well, asked me how yourself. old do you, I think a president should be, and I think that, well, I mean, we can't include Trump, because Trump's a different story altogether. He was insane. Why not? He's 71. He was, he, in, too old? he was insane 30 years ago. Okay, so whatever, you know, bad ideas he had, he had back then. Uh, I just, uh, I just don't think that with the job that needs to be done today, uh, someone who is not physically up to the job should take it. But that could be at any age. Well, that could be at any age, yeah, yeah. What about mentally up for it? Well, I, you know, look, are you gonna tell me that certain things haven't gone with age on you? I have to admit it, you know. I'm slower in terms of um, <laughs> there are okay. things that are just okay. funny. You and I just you know, went. You, you I, and was try, I was changing the bed this morning and going to do laundry, and I think of the, all the ho household chores they are. The one I've always hated the most is changing the bed sheets, but it's really gotten harder as I've gotten older. It's really hard to get those damn fitted sheets around the mattress. It's, and I, I, every time I do it, I ask myself, when will I not be able to do this anymore? Somebody's got to figure out a better way. But that doesn't affect my brain. Okay, but let me give you an example of what we're talking about. It just happened a few minutes ago. You and I and Skype. Yeah. Uh, you were completely flummoxed by it. Yeah, you that know, has nothing to do with age. That has a I, bad I, I, no, I think that if we had gone through that conversation 20 years ago, you would have been able to help solve the problem a lot better. You would have been a no, lot. You would have been a lot not more. Not that program. It's really awful. It is a shitty program. No, I know it's a shitty program, but your frustration level was higher than it would have been 20 years My, ago. 20, oh, you have no idea how much I'd calm down if you don't remember <laughs> 50 years ago. You don't remember the time we had a fight and I pulled the door off the hinge? I don't remember that. Did you really? In, in Houston, the bedroom door, I went to slam the door and the damn thing came off well, the Well, that, that you slammed it and <laughs> you didn't rip it off the hinges. It just fell by itself. Oh, no, it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, I, whatever it was, which I've long forgotten, there, I was There, there were many doors in our, in our relationship that were broken and phones that were ripped out of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I never did that. Did you? Don't well, yeah, you know? of course. You know, in the old days, here, here's how life has changed. This is, I love the old phones. Here's why. Uh, you, you could take a phone, rip it out of the wall, throw it across the room, okay, and it wouldn't break. Then you could take that phone, find the two things uh, that hooked into the wall, get a screwdriver, put it back in the wall, and you got your phone back again. And I felt that for years, you know, AT&T, when other people were coming out with phones and so on, should have said, remember that time you pulled the phone out of the wall because you were mad and you threw it against the wall and it didn't break? We're AT&T. We make a good phone. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> they made those things so they wouldn't break because they knew that they were going to be in the hands of the average people. I mean, they weighed a ton. You know, yeah. you could use them as a weapon. Uh, there was one time during a blackout in New York that it must have been that I had a wireless phone or mm -hmm. something yeah. because it wasn't working during the blackout. And I scrounged around in the closet and I found one of those old phones that you're talking about yeah. that you can barely lift. They're so yeah. heavy and strong. You know? And I plugged it into the wall and I could make phone calls. <laughs> See? See? <laughs> We're AT&T. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now all I've got is I've got a phone now. I've got a phone now that when I hold it up to my face, it recognizes me. Oh, you know, I was thinking about that the other day. Yeah. That um, should I drop dead, which, you know, at some point I will. Yeah. Um, and the person who's going to take care of everything. Mm-hmm. I, when I was thinking about doing that on my phone, I, I, I'm already doing fingerprints, but maybe doing the facial recognition. How's she going to get into my phone? If you have, it, what, what there is, is you do have the facial recognition. That's the best. But you also have a, uh, a passcode. So that if it doesn't work, let's say I know your passcode, but your face is what's recognized, and I put it up, it will then say enter passcode. You put the passcode in, and the phone opens up. 
So, okay, anybody that get, that knows how to hack things can get into your phone well, with facial recognition. You have a fail safe. Like, you're yeah. saying it's useless. No, it's not useless. It gets you into the phone. I don't know if, however, no, no, things... I'm saying having it, using facial recognition, if someone can hack into your phone and get the passcode, what's the point? Well, if they, if, if they can get the passcode, that doesn't mean they can use it to buy things with. I think you still have to have your facial recognition for that. Like I have, uh, you know, Apple Pay, for instance, with credit cards in there. And I look at this, and when I want to use it, I double click it. You put your it. credit cards in your phone? Yeah, I, look, watch. I would never watch do this, that. Watch this. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. What, what's that about? <laughs> Listen, to, we're doing a TV show. Come on. Oh, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Stop it. Cancel. Wait, but, uh, uh, hey, here, go away. Go no, away. Like you're supposed to be having a conversation. What? What is that there for? See Done. what I mean? Done. None of these things work right. Save photo. <laughs> I don't care. Anyway, here, here's what, here's what, what happens. You double click on this, and what happens? It, well, it should happen. There it is. See, there's my credit card. What did you double click? I double click on the side here, and oh, and, and there's my uh, credit card, and then it mm -hmm. says. Uh, facial recognition because it wants the facial recognition. Well, it's not doing it now because I didn't do it quick enough. Uh, but uh, if I uh, if I if I do this again, there we go. It did the passcode. Now it's ready to go. It just looked at my face and said, "Okay, that's you. You can now use that f your face to you know do your <laughs> well anyway." It's all too much. I, I have a phone that recognizes my face, which is more than my wife does. So, you know. It's Come on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she'd recognize you from across the street. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even seen you in person in years and years and years, and I would recognize yeah, you. Yeah, you probably would. Yeah. So, but uh, no, but getting back to the president, I just think I would like a younger president than, than you know. I felt, for instance, Bernie Sanders was really pushing it. You know, he should be an advisor to a president, but he, you know, I, I think that he wouldn't, I don't have the strength to do a lot of things now. You know, just the effort that it takes. Uh, I don't think today, for instance, a Franklin Roosevelt could have been president with his, with his polio. It would have been just Hi. too, because I think it would be, it would have been too much of a, of a, uh, of a strain on him. It was enough of a strain. It. it was enough of a strain when he, he did it, and but, he did quite nicely. Yeah, but every time he took a trip to Yalta or someplace like that, it took a few more years off his life. I mean, he was that fragile, you know. Until he died of old age. No, he died of a heart attack. All right, old age. No, he Most wasn't that old. People old. die he, of heart he, attacks. He was only not about, young people. He was only like about sixty-two, something like that. He was not In those old. Those days, people died at that I age. guess. Yeah, I guess that was old back then. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that was what 1942 or something, one or two. That he here, died? here, here's the old age story that really amazed me. Okay, John McCain's mother. Oh, isn't that a wonderful story? Is still alive. Yeah. She lived long enough to bury her 82 yeah, year old that's son. Yeah. yeah. Have yeah. That. I mean, 105 is she, or 106, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of old, my favorite thing this week that I found. Yeah. And I don't know how long ago it happened, but a little tiny short piece of video that I ran last Saturday on my blog of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg being interviewed. Mm -hmm. the interviewer asked her, um, when will there be enough wo women on the Supreme Court? And she smiled her little smile, and she said, when there are nine. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Notorious RBG. Yes, uh, my yeah. hero. Yeah. I want to grow up to be RBG. She's, uh, she's amazing. She's amazing. But, I mean, she ain't going nowhere. She knows that when she, if she quits, you know, it's all over for the Supreme Court, and she doesn't want to do it. I think she's going to just f kick and scream until she knows that somehow there'll be a more liberal justice put there to replace her, you know. So. Well, we'll see what happens with Mr. Kavanaugh. <laughs> well, we'll have to see what happens to Mr. Kavanaugh. Hey, listen, we believe it or not, 25 minutes have just flown by. Yeah, well, you know, we shouldn't have done all that thing with the phone. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't have done that thing with the phone. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you can go to uh, timegoesby.net uh, and uh, read her blog. It's all about getting old, and all of you are getting older, so maybe you should take a look at it. If nothing more, she's kind of the sac Sacagawea of aging. She Why will tell you. What because, does that mean? Well, Sacagawea led the Lewis and Clark party across the country, <laughs> and you're leading these people into old age. I mean, no matter how old you are, you should read this because you better find out what it's like to get old. You know, I've got a lot of 90 something readers. Not a lot, but quite a few. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you.